Tens of thousands of Central Americans flee extreme violence or poverty in their countries every month. They head for the Mexican border, and many hope to continue to the U.S. On the dangerous route north through Mexico, there are hostels where asylum seekers and migrants can stay without fear of arrest or attacks by criminals. Just three days ago, Pedro and Diana arrived at a hostel in Ixtepec, Oaxaca State, in southern Mexico, after running for their lives from Honduras. In Honduras, I was a housewife. I took care of the children. I have three. One is six years old, another is four, and the other is three. My husband, you could see that he had been successful, that he had made money. He got seven gunshot wounds to his body. He was brought to the emergency room and he spent two months in the hospital. I was the only one who took care of him. While he was at the hospital, several policemen came. I mean, they were on someone's payroll. They wanted to take him out of there. It was a very painful experience. That's why we decided to flee the country. To leave Honduras. My name is Pedro Gutierrez. I'm from Honduras. I'm 35 years old. I have my face covered because I've been the victim of violence, both from the Honduran authorities and from organized crime. Six years ago, they killed one of my brothers, and then last year, I was attacked. It was organized crime. They attacked us because they were demanding a huge sum of money and we didn't want to pay it. My brother is dead. The authorities know about it, but they never did anything about it. It was the first time I'd ever left my country. I never thought it would be so dangerous for my children. I thought about it a lot before coming here, but it was very hard to leave everything that we had worked for, that we had worked so hard for. We came with nothing, without clothes with nothing. My children got dehydrated when we were walking through the mountains. They got sick. But thank God they were able to keep going until we made it out of there. And seeing my kids sleep in the park, that hurt me. It made me cry. I cried a lot. My kids all scratched. It was too painful to watch. It's hard for me to talk about this because what my kids and I have experienced is just too hard. Pues. Well, it's been three days since we arrived. We're waiting to get a humanitarian visa so I can work without fear. A humanitarian visa, it means that you can work in the country and you are no longer breaking immigration laws. I have the proof from my country that my family and I have been victims of abuse by soldiers and by police and that we've suffered a lot. We've been tortured and people have put guns in our mouths. 
telling us that they were going to kill us. When we are honest people who work the land. In Honduras, violence affects people because organized crime, I'm not going to name names, they take over and charge a tax called a war tax. And those who don't pay, well, they have to pay for it with their lives. It hasn't only happened to me. There are a lot of people who have died. And the people who manage to leave emigrate to other countries, trying to save their lives. But it's not that they want to emigrate, rather than they're forced to. Right now, my concerns are that both of my hands are injured and I can't provide for my kids. And this is what worries me the most, because I've always liked to work and to give them everything I possibly can in life, to them and to my wife. What I would say to everyone is that if people from any country are in a situation like mine, one that many people have gone through, well, try to help them by giving them humanitarian asylum. So that they can remake their lives in another country because we are all human beings. We deserve an opportunity in life and we deserve a fighting chance to continue living. Now, in our country and in our sister country, El Salvador, it's impossible to live. The violence is really brutal. So I ask everyone to try to give us an opportunity like the humans that we are. Thank you.